Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video, we're going to have a look at the brushes and illustrations I made during the first week of Brushtober 2022. So let's jump right into it. <coughs> Brushtober is a special event where I create appropriate brush and an illustration with that brush every day through October. You can see my daily progress on my Instagram or Twitter accounts, so make sure to follow through the links below. If you want to know how you can get this brush set for free for a limited time, check out the info in the description of this video for all the details. For day 1, I wanted to kick things off with a painterly brush, something that would allow for drawing thick and messy line work, and also adding textured color strokes. I decided to call this brush, Flowing Winds. For some reason, this brush made me think of jazz music, so I searched for related interesting photo references, and I found this one by Luigi Bacardo. My intention was to make a really loose kind of sketchy painting. I used the brush with big strokes at first, so I could block the main shapes of the subject. And then I started to work with a smaller size of the brush, and alternating between the painting and the eraser tools, to redraw with more detail. I mainly focused on adding more detail in important areas, like the face, and I purposely left less important areas less detailed, to make them look out of focus, like the clothes or the arm. Then based on the very limited color scheme I chose for this brush tober, I added shading and lighting in these simple two tones. I ended up liking this loose and sketchy brush a lot, I thought it was a lot of fun to work with. On day 2, I created this inking brush that has a liquid feel to it. What I liked about it, is that if you use it in a small size, it's pretty much a regular incur brush with a nice feel to it. But if you increase the size, you start to see a nice liquid-like texture. I call this brush, Liquid Ink. While I was thinking of what to draw with this brush, I stumbled upon some photos of burgers online, and I immediately thought of the idea of a burger that looks like a fun monster jumping, and with the ingredients spreading me there. I first used the brush, to make a loose sketch of what I wanted to draw. I thought it would be cool to make the onion rings be the eyes, and the other ingredients resembling other parts of a mouth. When I finished the sketch, I lowered the opacity of the layer and inked the final line art on a new layer, this time paying more attention to the details. I also added some manual cross hatching, to simulate some shading and texture. For the coloring part, I expanded a little on the limited color scheme I'm using for this brush tober, and I added a couple extra tones, to complement the base colors. I also alpha locked the inked lines, and colored some parts, and I think that makes the illustration have an extra punch to it. On day 3, I wanted to experiment with a thick and rough line brush. 
The shape of this brush is actually an arrow and I think it gives an interesting outcome. I feel the name Grunge Line Art is a good fit for this brush. For this quick illustration, I saw this amazing photo by Riba Spike on Unsplash and I just had to draw this crazy looking cat in the middle of that field of flowers. There's something about the inaccuracy of this brush that forces you into drawing with a loose mindset that I really enjoy. It also pushes you into being more thoughtful about the design and simplification of the shapes. When it came to coloring this illustration, I decided to ignore the color scheme I was using so far and paint more freely following my reference. I was surprised at the awesome textures I could get with this brush by using it in a huge size and pressing very lightly with the Apple Pencil. This one is definitely one of my favorite brushes from this batch. For day 4, I went back to a more painterly style of brush. I loved the crazy texture I was able to achieve with this one. The strokes look very natural and organic, so I decided to call this one Organic Mess. For this doodle, I knew I wanted to paint something related to space, a big planet in the center of the scene, and some kind of nebula around, all sprinkled with glowing stars. The problem is that I wasn't sure about the color palette, so you're going to see me struggling a little. There was a lot of trial and error, and I even ended up using the gradient map tool at one point, until I found a combination of colors that looked convincing to me. Overall, I wasn't super happy of how this painting turned out, but with these kind of challenges, you can't just nail them all. On day 5, I woke up to very sad news. I read on the internet that Kim Jong gi had passed away at the terribly young age of 47. I was so shocked, just like everyone else in the art community. I immediately knew that I had to dedicate the brush to this incredible artist. I've admired Jung gis art for a long time, and looking at his art has always felt so refreshing and inspiring. I took all that and made this brush with all the care and craftsmanship I was able to, heavily inspired by his art and unmistakable style. I wanted the brush to mimic as closely as I could Jung Gi's strokes. Obviously this brush cannot give you his insane artistic skills in any way, but I hope it can serve as a humble homage. For this illustration, I made a self caricature from a wild angle, inspired by this type of illustrations Jung Gi used to draw. I drew myself drawing on my iPad, with my small but appreciated desk, and all the mess I have on it. I don't know what else to say, aside from the fact that Kim Jung Gi will be greatly missed. On day 6, I was in the mood for a very textured brush. I came up with this brush that has a nice grain when applying low pressure and rough edges all around. I called this one Burn Sponge. For this doodle, I wanted to paint something floral. This beautiful photo referenced by Ryunosuke Kikuno really grabbed my attention with its colors when I saw it. This is a great brush to jump directly into painting these kind of subjects without having to rely on a previous sketch. It's easy to use and very versatile. 
my process as usual was to block the main shapes and then finish up the details by alpha locking the layer and working with smaller brush strokes. I really enjoyed the textures in this one. I'm a big fan of heavily textured and rough inking brushes, but for day 7, I wanted to experiment with something different, so I created this super clean round and bold brush that has a 15% of stabilization activated, so it has a nice natural flow when drawing. 15% stable is the name for this brush. I came up with this idea of drawing some kind of humanized parrot with arms and legs, holding a little briefcase and looking at his watch like he's getting late to work. I started with a rough sketch and then I cleaned the drawing on a new layer. Since I almost never do artworks with such clean lines like this, I have to say that I really liked how this one turned out. For the colors, I limited myself to the color scheme I had already established for this Brushtober edition. For day 8, I made this brush that has a crazy double effect. In one hand, it has this kind of super clean square shaped line, but at the same time, it adds this crazy extra grainy texture along the stroke when you apply high pressure. I call this one, graphic hyperload. For this doodle, I basically improvised with whatever my hand wanted to draw, and I just ran along with it. I pictured a woman standing from behind, holding some headphones, and dedicated some time until the features and proportions looked right to me. This brush also allows for some nice blending capabilities when using it with the smudge tool and I took advantage of it when rendering the hair and some parts of her jacket. For the background, I wanted to add the words graphic hyperload, but as you can see, I misspelled the word hyper and now while I edit this video, it is too late to fix it. I like to think that the character hides the mistake a little bit, so it's all good. I also ended up improvising a lot when it came to coloring this piece, and I really like how the textures turned out. And that's it for today. These are the 8 brushes I did this week for my Brushtober Challenge 2022. Let me know in the comments which of these brushes was your favorite so far. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video and give me a thumbs up. Also make sure to check out my Gumroad page and consider making a purchase before the end of October to get this unique brush set for free. I have tons of Procreate brush sets available and I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.